My name is Peter Mavergenis. I am the National Reunion Chair um, for the college, and we have a distinguished panel uh, with a lot of experience uh, uh, having worked on reunions. I, um, I'll introduce them sequentially, but let me just tell you, I was the uh, uh, gift chair of my 30th re reunion uh, last year. We had a very successful fundraising effort, um, which was a ended up being uh, hugely successful as one of our one of my classmates made a donation to the uh, to build the uh, to, to, to see the uh, the building for the Regenstein annex uh, Joe Mansueto and his wife um, and so we ended up I, I had the privilege of presenting John Boyer with a check for 26 and a half million dollars and that was, that was a lot of fun uh, but it, not in large part due to my work so anyway uh, in the, in the context of the 30th reunion, I was on the reunion committee, which was, there's a, there's a gift chair and then a program chair. And we've kind of, we'd separated them out into two separate functions. And so, um, but to, as, as chair, I was on both, and as was the uh, program chair. So let me start by introducing our, our, our panel. We have Michelle Lesh, AB uh, 2007. Uh, Anita Brickell from 75. Uh, David Ostro from 69, the, uh, the, the, the protest days. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, um, 68. 68. <laughs> we have uh, Phil Caruso, from also from 07, and then uh, uh, Scott Morris from 1986. So we've got a wide range of, of, of years here. I'd like to use, if, if the panel can start by describing a little bit of their background and what you've done with reunions uh, heretofore, if any. Michelle? Um, I'll start. I was the uh, chair for my senior class gift in 2007, and we had the honor of being the highest participating class of that in 2007 when we graduated. Um, I've also been involved on my class council for reunions and have helped out with Phoenix Fest. So I've been an, an involved alum so far. Okay. Um, a college graduate from 75 and a business school graduate from 76. And then my husband here and live in New York City. And um, both my husband and I have been active volunteers, you know, really since the, the days that we graduated. I uh, had, have had leadership of positions in reunions. So 15th, 25th, and then most recently the 30th, um, both on the gift side and more recently on the programming side. So uh, any excuse to get back to campus is a great one. And reunions are a fun way to do it. So I think we all look forward to sharing our experiences with you today. Um, I graduated from the college in 69 where somebody said the protest year. Actually, there's a whole period in there from the class, I would say, 66 to 70, where people were involved in, in protests. And for that reason, um, my class has always had a very um, low turnout at alumni. Uh, fairs, especially at the at the uh, major reunions. So I took on the uh, position of um, program chair for the last year, with the hopes that we could turn that around and and get pe more people to come. And I can talk about that later. But I've always also had the conflict that I got my PhD in '74 from the university and my MD from '75, and I'm former president of, of the medical alumni uh, council. So I um, I'm always pulled. Uh, between the events that take place during alumni weekend, because they're um, they're totally they're, they're they're scheduled at the exact same time. I have to go to an alumni senate meeting right after this uh, uh, presentation. So uh, there's always been that tension, and and where do I get the money? Which one is more needy? And being in public health, um, uh, can I give my time and energy more than I can give any than I can give money? I'm Phil Caruso. Uh, I'm 07 along with Michelle here, and uh, I'm currently living in Boston. I'm actually glad Michelle's here because in, in my reunion experience, um, I haven't been as involved with the, the actual programming of the event. My, my activities have really focused more on how to lure young alumni from D.C., where I was last year, and, and now Boston. How do I get them back to Chicago for the reunions? Um, I, I sat on the second year reunion committee last year, uh, the first year reunion committee before that, and then started with senior class gift um, here on campus. but. Really, a lot of the work that I've done so far has focused around local alumni clubs and, and how do we energize young alumni, not just to be active on the local level, but also to come back to participate and to, uh, 
to be back on campus for their reunions. Good morning, I'm Scott Morris, class of 86. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. Um, I was in the auditorium uh, listening to the, the end of President Zimmer's speech, and I was just struck by the fact that the room was full. I think it's great. So thank you all for coming out and giving your day uh, to help us here. Um, I got active of my, two, my, my 20th class, 2006, as the co-program chair, um, and, and uh, have been active since. Thank you. So I think uh, uh, the topics that we'll talk about today and give you our experiences, share our knowledge, whatever we've gained, uh, uh, for, I'll take from the, uh, from the advertised uh, uh, topic, which are committee communication, gift participation, encouraging reunion attendance, and outreach efforts. These are all kind of you know, major uh, hurdles and major challenges. Uh, uh, my, I think my biggest, from my experience, my biggest <clears throat> single piece of advice for uh, those of you on uh, committees, reunion committees, is to get a big committee together as big as possible. It's, it, uh, it, it, it encourages uh, participation in the gifting, it encourages participation at the at the uh, event of at the reunion events, and so that's that that's a, and then getting really key people involved. But there are also our challenges that come along with that. It makes communications more difficult. Um, there's people all over the country. So for those of you maybe who who sat on big committees, um, could you maybe t a, a, you know talk, Scott? I don't know how big your committee was, um, but you know. Yeah, sure. It, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. I'll start. Um, uh, our committee, I think, um, did become pretty big, and uh, and maybe I can talk a little bit about how to to, to reach that critical mass because I think it's one of those things that once people know that other people are going, then they get or are involved in it, then they become interested. So I think what was successful about ours, and and uh, I can't take any credit for this. I think it was more. Uh, the university uh, folks that sort of got a core group together had been working on it for a year or so, people from, from different areas of, with, with different friends and groups and so forth, and um, created the buzz there, and then we were able to expand it to uh, those people that we knew. So um, people, if you say, hey, uh, you want to be on the reunion committee, people are going to say, ah, I don't know, I'm probably not going to come, why would I care about that? So all you do is you just sort of get them in the email chain, and you almost don't even ask them. You just sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, it's true. And you know, you get them in the email chain, and you start seeing, seeing in this email, and they find out, oh, that person's going, this person's going, and then they kind of get excited about the experience, and then you can reach out to them and um, say, okay, now it's your turn. Who do you know that might be interested? And you know, it was kind of fun. We had uh, a list of all, all, all of the, you get, you get a, a copy of the pick book, by the way, which is, which is kind of fun. And then, um, and, and then, but then you, can, you get their current emails and so forth and start contacting people. And I made some connections with some old folks, and I think a lot of other people did. So the, the trick is, you know, uh, getting the core group that say that they're going to be there, and then it starts um, going from there. I don't know if anybody else has any other experience. How, like about, how big was your, was your group? How big was your committee when you say group? I don't remember. Do you remember? 20 at least. Yeah, 20. I think yeah. it yeah, about 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, five years ago for our 30th reunion, we probably had 20. But you know, on any given conference call that you have, not everybody can come, right? So you want to have at least 10 to 12. You know, having a good, meaty discussion um, during your conference calls, um, and try to find um, people from different affinity groups. You know, so it's not everybody from Shorey House and Pierce Tower. You might have some folks, you know, athletes, newspaper, whatever, and um, so you, so you're building on that on that network. Um, um, in terms of communication, I wanted to add that um, when you have a big group, um, you don't want to lose people either because let's say you're having your, your conference call during the lunch hour, most people are going to be, you know, uh, have careers and they have an hour, say. So you have the, whoever's managing the call should just be aware that you need to get the business done within that hour. 
if it runs over, I think you're going to lose people the next time because they got burned. <coughs> and so um, one of the things that the university helps us with is to you know, come up with an agenda for that conference call. And you can signal to people in advance, you know, what are the topics going to be? Come with an idea of, you know, the venue. Here are the choices of venues for your class dinner. Um, think about who you might like to invite as a faculty member so that you're not springing this on your committee. Um, at the time of the conference call, this, some thought can be put into it in advance. And then you can manage it a little bit better too because I don't think what you want to have happen as a University of Chicago graduate can talk endlessly about how many angels can fit on the head of a pen. And they, they can do that for the venue. <laughs> uh, you know, you can, you can go on for quite a while, so you, you need to manage the conversation and give people an advance. Anita, I think that was a really good point uh, about getting people from different well. groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that I, I stumbled on, now first of all, the staff is terrific, and they'll give you a lot of help in terms of identifying people who have been involved before and who are uh, very well connected. And I stumbled onto a couple uh, in my year that was, they just knew everybody in the class and they made it, and, and, and they were very helpful. So, um, it, but to get across, you know, to, from, from uh, you know, uh, alumni who lived in one house or another house or one, or were involved in one activity over another, uh, it was very important because you could miss a whole big chunk of your class if you don't have some inroad into that. How, how about the younger members in the panel? Have, have you guys had any experience with this and, you know, in, in, in dealing with a large committee? We, we, I've already spoken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the youngest member. Uh, 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 excuse me, Scott, I didn't really, <laughs> it didn't occur to me. It's I, actually, Oh, go ahead, Bill. It's an interesting question. I think um, because at this point, Michelle and I have been on the committees every year since we were still in college, uh, the process itself is almost, uh, it's almost pretty memorable for us. You know, you, you have our, our class list and we go through and we divvy it up and, and over the course of the year, uh, there, there's people who go off and do programming and there are people who um, focus on bringing um, folks back to Chicago and, and you, you have your outreach list, but I think because it's sort of enculturated in the volunteers at this point, um, we don't really need that much coordination um, to do sort of the basic activities. I know there's a lot of you know, innovation that goes into specific parts of the reunion, but um, for I think the core activity of, of reaching out to people and bringing them back, um, once you get volunteers continually involved year after year, it, it becomes sort of second habit, and it's much easier to manage that process. Right. I, I, mean, I agree with that as well, Phil. And I think with our class, we, as a senior class gift, we had a lot of Greek involvement and a lot of athletic involvement. Mm -hmm. We did have involvement from other groups as well, but just having those two core groups and expanding, we've gotten a lot of different people involved as the years have gone on, and then they've become involved in um, our volunteer efforts as well. And like Phil said, it's kind of a process now. Everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing. And that's helped take a lot of emphasis off the call where you can't get people to focus. It's just kind of a, a summary. Here's high level what you're supposed to do. Here's your action items. And then people do the do what they're supposed to. We don't have to over communicate, which is, I think, really important. With Did you divide up into subcommittees? Yeah. We have. Um, we have, I guess there's kind of subcommittees. Everyone just kind of knows who they're responsible for. So um, specifically what we're doing with reunion, we have our full class list. Everyone takes 20 or 30 people, contacts them via email, phone, whatever they're more comfortable with. And then from that outreach, hopefully those people contact their friends and say that they're coming to our re reunion as well. And we do a lot of emailing too. You know, we're, we're kind of our generation. So that's worked very well for us. David? Um, it was very different for, for us because, as I said, there had been very low participation at the, at the 25th, 30th, and 35th. So we didn't have much of a core group, and it wasn't so much that we had like a lot of traditional uh, things. So it was almost starting from scratch. But um, the one thing I, I, I want to emphasize is you can't start too early, okay? I mean, I was approached by the staff um, late spring, early summer the year before, and it was very informal, and it was like, well, we're talking to various members of your class to see, um, A, uh, who the people you would, you would want to reach out to, 
because that was a big thing. We didn't have, uh, if you looked at the donor list alone, there wasn't a critical mass there for a reunion. So we re uh, really had to uh, do a lot of social networking, which even people my age now are, are getting into. Um, unfortunately, the staff was wonderful throughout, but there was 100% turnover of staff right in the middle of, of that year. So, uh, and not a whole lot of institutional memory of what we were doing from the first staff to the second staff. So it was almost like starting over again in January, but um, you can start sooner. And, and I would say that when you're done with the reunion, that's when you need to start talking to the people who are active in that reunion about what's gonna happen five years from now. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I really felt that in, uh, not so much in the program side, but in the um, fundraising side, I'm terrible at cold calls. If you gave me a list of 20 people, I would maybe get through to one of them and I wouldn't know what to say. So um, uh, I think that developing a relationship, uh, oh yes, I saw you at the reunion, or I missed you at the reunion. One way or the other, you can start talking about things um, for, the next, for the next major reunion. Now, on my committee, we, had, um, we used email a lot. It's, it's without look and you get the mailing list and so forth. That works really well, of course. And then we supplemented that with conference calls. Um, and we also had um, a, c a couple of, 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 of meetings, uh, one in Chicago, one in New York. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's transition to gift participation, sort of the, you know, the, real, uh, the, the real core of the issue here, because it's an issue, it's a little hard for people to, to, you know, to call somebody up and ask them to make a donation. Um, you don't know their circumstances, you don't know their attitudes towards the university. And so how did you guys handle uh, encouraging classmates to contribute, make a donation to the university. Let, let's start with you, Michelle. Okay, well, I, we, our strategy, I think, for senior class gift was a little bit different than, um, as alumni, with senior class gift, it was just to participate, and then you're, you know, you participated, thank you so much. But um, being alumni, and especially, I think, when we graduated, there was a lot of people who had jobs that may not necessarily have jobs or in a position to give back at this point. Um, so I, when I make gift calls, I, definitely talk to them about their experience at the university. How do you think the university has helped you get where you are today? And um, just kind of start that discussion. And usually it, it ends up kind of on a positive upswing. And, you know, they're willing to give at least something. Right. The, the, I think the senior class gift helps a lot. I mean, if it's anything, $10, $25, <laughs> mm -hmm. and just start the ball rolling. We didn't do that, you know, at, when, when I was here. That was not done. Um, Scott, was it done when you, because you're, you know, you're sort of an intermediate, not young, but intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's very young. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's me, of course. All right. <laughs> so, um, that, I think that helps with the, at, at the younger ages, you know, the, the more recent graduates have had this, you know, uh, be, begun at, while you're at the college. Right. And so the first reunion, the second reunion are a little easier because they've, they've, they've gotten in the habit of, of donating. Now, I, I, my, my guess is, David, you know, in your years, that was probably a, 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 a rather awkward call to make. You might have gotten a lot of people that said, you know, I didn't enjoy my four years at Chicago. Um, you know, I went there and, and, and I don't want to be involved. And how do you deal with that? Well, that, that, that was um, the big thing that we had to deal with. And, and we did exactly what I think somebody else just mentioned um, for this year. We said, we're not gonna focus on all the things that made us upset and angry with the university during the, the years of 65 to 69, or for many of the people who came this year, they didn't even graduate. They were ex-69 uh, or whatever. But uh, we would instead focus on what did those years mean to your life since you left the university, and, and how you know, e even though it may have been very difficult and you may have a lot of <coughs> scars and stress or PTSD or whatever, um, uh, 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 there, there was something about that period in your life that determined your, um, where you went with your life and your career and so forth. And that was really clear to me at my last major uh, medical uh, school reunion because we, we spent most of the dinner going around and talking at length about what, what, what we had done. 
And I would say there wasn't a single person in that room who uh, stayed in their original chosen field of medicine or research or whatever. Everybody had impa been impacted by either the AIDS crisis or global health issues, et cetera. And so it was really exciting to see how um, even people who, who might have had negative thoughts about the university uh, really utilized their, their education uh, to do very exciting and, and, and trailblazing and important things. So that was the emphasis for our year. What, what did, the, did, you, did the university experience mean for you? And we even took on, uh, you know, in retrospect, what might have been too much, and that was to create a movie called The Way We Were, um, University of Chicago Student Life, 1964 to 74, as portrayed in films. And we did interviews with some people here. It's a, it, it's it's actually a very popular unpublished film. I had some, I had, I, I, I ran, I ran into Jim McDaniel's as I was coming in, and he said he was in Paris two weeks ago at the Paris Center for uh, uh, the College Visiting Committee stuff, and somebody came up to him and said, "I know you. I saw you in a film." <laughs> and, and, and because he was one of the people that we that, that, that we interviewed, so so we tried to make it. Um, uh, let's let's hear your personal narrative of what the university meant for you, and we and I hope it'll be built on. And the other thing was we had communication with the years, the people who've been active in the years before and after us, because we wanted their input to the film, and we also thought that the film would be a work in progress. That, like, say, this coming year, uh, the uh, the class of 1970 might add to it and and, and further it. So. Um, those are good things. But we basically divided the tasks. I, I did program and Penny Aspel did um, you know, the, the money side of things. And Let I, me also interrupt you to just to say, if you have any questions or comments, just you know, raise your hand or something and, I'll, and, and we'll take them, rather than wait till the end for a question session. If you have any questions, just, just, just raise them at the, at the time. Thank you. It's not, not, Scott, let me go to Scott because Scott's sort of you know, uh, um, a little bit, you know, beyond this. We were past the protest years. You know, you were more in, 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 a, in a less tumultuous yeah. period of the university, and it's sort of in, in this transition from a smaller college, kind of yeah. growing towards a much, towards a what I think of as a much larger college. Of course, it's not much larger, but it's uh, you know two or three times the size it was when I was here. So, what were your experiences? Did you have any? You know, how did you uh, uh, reach out to people for, for sure. gifts? Um, yeah, the, the 80s were a time transition. We still got some people that, on the phone. We, I hated the university, blah, blah, blah. But I think they were a lot less from the, the late 60s. <clears throat> for the most part, there was interest. Um, and uh, I, I would just say, just in general, if you, if you haven't been involved in fun fundraising before, the, the number one thing that will get people to give is being asked by a peer. So there's a sense of peer pressure involved in the process, subtle peer pressure, right? I mean, it's not necessary, but it is, it is peer pressure. So, so the, uh, to do the, the campaign right is to find the right person to make the ask. So, um, and it should be someone that has, has, has given money. And again, um, people uh, tend to get um, caught in the fact of the amount that you, you get that you're trying to raise, and, and there will hopefully be one or two people like in Peter's class that can come forward and give a big gift and, and make the overall number um, a, a big number. But really, I think it's more important to focus on the percent of contribution, to try to get as many people involved, because if you can get them to give, give $25 or 50 bucks, okay, that says a, a level of commitment that they're interested, and they're part of the community again, and um, you know maybe they'll be willing to give 100 next time. Who knows? But again, the, the act of giving in itself is sort of like uh, saying that they're 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 involved and they believe in the university. So again, don't focus on the amount so much. Um, if there are people that um, are um, they that the, the, the are willing to are able to give a lot, the. The university has some professionals that understand that, and they will help you, in this, and this, and, and and will and work with them. So you don't have to be on that part of it so much. You do have to find the right person or help them um, create the right environment for them to to give to, to write the check. But um, focus on on getting participation and people involved. And Phil, did you guys or, or and, and, and or Anita? I'm going to these are different you know, eras here. But did you guys have anything? I, I was struck by what David said, mentioned about his 
about his film. I, I'm, I'm on, I was unaware of that, but did you guys do anything novel like that that, that, that might have uh, you know, contributed and promoted the, 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 uh, the whole event? Actually, I think um, something we did in D.C. when I was there in 2008, it was, it was my first year after graduating. Um, it, it's an event that um, we did there. I think we expanded it to a couple more cities last year, but in April, leading up to the reunion, we, we held an event called Participate Chicago, and it was for D.C. young alumni. We focused on the uh, most recent 10 classes, and, and those were areas where we, we really wanted to continue to sustain a high um, giving percentage coming out of senior class gift. We hit, uh, I think, 75 percent or something like that senior class gift, and then the first year, you usually see a big drop-off, and then second year, that's even, even worse, but uh, in order to try to sustain that percentage, uh, we, we had a list of all the young alumni in, in D.C., and we said, okay, well, um, this will be a free event, but we'd like you to consider giving to the university um, as part of it. And so the, the outreach for the event itself um, was really focused around finding people who hadn't given yet, um, inviting them to come along, and then we had donation table. We had a donation table at the event. We had a lot of that in the ask leading up to it in the first place. And so um, I think a lot of that was really try to ju just promote the participation leading into reunion itself. Um, and so we used an opportunity to promote coming back to Chicago. We used an opportunity to promote, to promote the uh, events we were doing in D.C. But uh, we saw a pretty good we saw a pretty good turnout. Um, and I, I think you know it, if if you start to use it in cities where um, you do have large collections of young alumni, I'm not sure how effective it would be for um, some of the later classes. Um, but it was effective in sort of sustaining that that level of momentum for the first few years out of college. Yeah, Anita, anything from mm -hmm. your call? No, but I was. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't done the fundraising for about 10 years, but what I found useful um, for our 25th reunion, um, and the universe was very helpful, um, was to find a way to further connect to the people that you were calling. So, you know, you have this enormous database of all your class members, right? And the one thing that you have in common with them, of course, is that you're, it's your reunion year, but, you know, if you can find an additional way to connect with that person, I think it helps the cell, right? So um, we did some screens um, to narrow down who we were going to have call on a particular uh, classmate. So, you know, if you logically were in the same dorm, you might call on those people, but you, you also end up needing to call people that you've never met before. And so, you know, I'm a banker, and so, you know, there were people who are in finance that I could then say, yeah, it's a reunion, and oh, you know, I work at Citibank, you know, you work at Morgan Stanley or whatever. You could have that kind of additional conversation or, um, you know, people that are maybe in your same geographic area. There are different ways that you can sort your classmates and then try and find some other way to touch them to have that, uh, that experience, mm -hmm. conversation with them. Good idea. Question. Um, yeah, I'm actually still at school in class of 2012 and I'm working with the student alumni team. What we're trying to do is get the students involved while they're still in college, even before senior class, but so that they stay involved when they do become I was just wondering if you guys had any insights or suggestions on the ways to do that. Phil and yeah, Michelle, probably. That, that, is, that, that is really encouraging to hear. I'm yes. very excited that there is a student alumni <clears throat> committee um, with, with that kind of purpose. Um, I, I think that that is really leading towards the senior class gift is an important part, but what's really helped me connect with uh, alumni as sort of coming out of the student experience has been um, seeing what kind of activities and what kind of community they have outside of Chicago. Um, so I'm from Boston originally. Um, when I was back at home, I, I was encouraged to go to the, the send-off events for um, incoming students. That was a huge part of you know, sustaining my connection to Chicago. I continue to go to those when I can. Um, I think seeing some of the other alums and the affinity groups that they have around um, the, the other cities in Boston, they have a, a life sciences group and some uh, an entrepreneurial group from the GSB. Um, Knowing what it, what's available as an alum um, before you actually get out there is, is just really helpful so you're not feeling your way through the dark when you get to a new city and you don't really know anyone there. I, I was just going to add that the, uh, my son told me the world's coming to, to an end in 2012. I think that the uh, whole Odyssey scholarship program and the way the university is doing it um, 
throughout the last year, there have been countless opportunities to meet with the students who are getting Odyssey scholarships, particularly if you, ha if you have a name scholarship that you've done everything. And I think, um, you know, there's no, there's, the thing that keeps me giving my university is that I, that I went here for 15 years and ne never, never paid a penny and, and graduated with, with a student loan balance of $1,200. Um, and I finally said, and so, and, and so, and so, the, so, so the, the more you can, um, you know, remind your classmates that it's the alumni that are providing a fair share of the of the scholarship uh, monies uh, in the, in this environment. I think uh, will create that kind of uh, payback kind of feeling. Uh, um, Shall I think want, sustains me? Do you want to get thoughts? Yeah, I just on? want to get a word, and then David. Stuff. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, I just wanted to add in that the um, I'm also involved with the alumni careers network with CAPS, mm -hmm. and I think really pointing that out to undergraduates and having them email people because I think I've been on it for since I've graduated, I think only two people have emailed me, but I'm on there because I want people to email me. So really helping to bridge those contacts as far as networking, I think that's something that we can do a lot better that we're not. Um, I guess strong in yet, but I think that's something that really helps connect undergraduates with the alumni at the university because people want to help. Tom had a question here. Um, I'm here. I'm here uh, for uh, one reason, uh, which is uh, I'd like to learn from you. Um, I have not really felt that I've had good reunion experiences, and I'm like last year was my 40th. Um, I I went to Fordham, and uh, then I came here. I came here as a master's. Um, and uh, I have stronger feelings for Chicago, but I do feel that the university has not gone after graduate students the way it should. I brought that up to a few administrators uh, in alumni. I think the solution may have to come from the bottom up, from people like myself, whatever. I don't know what it is about the MA and PhD students that they say that they forget the place, or they, they, they don't have any connection, and that, I think that's false. So what I'm, what I'm really wanting to put out there is that as I approach 45 and 50, because when I came back to the 40th, I was marching with a class of five. And I, you know, and at the 25th, it was about 10. There's no reason that the University of Chicago, which was a graduate institution, up until 20 years ago, when the college expanded. There's no reason the University of Chicago has not tapped its graduate uh, uh, alums for, uh, for all of this. The ask, the ask, for sure. They're 50 and 60 years old now. They're the ones you, you want to ask. And uh, so I don't know. So I want to put it out there. I want to know if uh, any of you feel the same way I do. I come from class of 68. I don't have bad memories. <laughs> But it was a tumultuous time. And uh, uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, you know, sort of like, what do all of you college people who seem to have such good connections and all of that, what, what can the college offer to, of course, there's law, there's medicine, we got all those people, they, they got their thing. But I don't know what it is about social science like me, where uh, <laughs> we only win Nobel Prizes uh, just like everybody else, you know. Uh, we don't know what it is about us that, that, that we feel like the uh, stepchild. Anybody can, can anybody talk to that? I, I, I'm a graduate of the college. <clears throat> I, I, <laughs> and any of the staff members, I guess? Can, um, my name is Judith Stein, and I'm on the ABG. This has been an issue time that we have been discussing recently. Um, the, it's, it's probably the most difficult outreach for, uh, for the Alumni Association, uh, and that's because we most people tend to identify with their colleges more than their graduate schools. And because graduate school so often is an independent kind of thing, and the divisionals at this institution have always sort of sent you off to do it on your own. Uh, and you live, if you're not living in dorms or living in apartments, you don't have, you have a different kind of collegiality. We are desperate for ideas. So there's no so, common experience. So the, answer, the answer is there's no common experience. 
but we, we would love to work, I mean, we want to work on it. Uh, we raised this question with Bob Zimmer in, in our meeting earlier. And uh, anybody who's got suggestions or ideas or ways of talking to your divisions, uh, let us know. I'll, I'll give you my email and, and, and Okay, well, let's, let's try to. It, just, that just reminded me, I just recently noticed that we have these, I, didn't, I just picked up the Orca events for the fall quarter, and there's now actually a social event for graduate students, and it's just graduate students. And I think, so when maybe this is small, yeah, there, there are some kind of connect people across different disciplines. Question here. Uh, I had a short comment and then a question. The comment ties Melissa and Tom and Judith here all. One thing, uh, I'm class of 86 with my young friend Scott, but I think class of 87 has put together a class council, and which is this new how to have love in between reunion years kind of thing. that was passe, right? Or maybe, maybe his class of 89, his class council of 89 has adopted the class of 2009 and using it as very much in a cap sort of way. If you're a graduate student in physics, wouldn't you like to have a channel to tell a college kid there are careers in physics you may not know about, even though it's because, never mind, it's not my college, but it's the senior person in the field talking to a young person. <coughs> And it's your uncle or aunt, maybe not your sister or brother in <coughs> graduate college sort of way. But that's what we talked earlier in this morning's fundraising thing about it's the relevance. You know, how can I take my public health? You know, now that we don't have typhoid, what is public health? Well, tell a 19 year old, you know, go do it through caps, make the person feel, generate the goodwill and the good funds such as they are available should come afterwards. Are the staff members in attendance like taking the notes? I mean, that, that seems uh, a good so idea. My, so my question, my question, my question, because I'm for my other thing, was about building community, uh, whether it's around attendance and people knowing their good friends are going, or just the me momentum that builds generally. What, and this goes especially to the younger ones, but also the uh, more seasoned alums, um, what things work to really create that? Because email is kind of a pain. You know, is, is Facebook an avenue? Does the school do some sort of uh, microsite for a class of umpteen, you know, that makes it feel like you can see what the events are, for, either from a planning committee standpoint, let's all log to the same place and have links to vote on things, or even just to say, hey, Susan Duluth, I'll call Duluth, I have a business trip there, or Jack <coughs> in Illinois is going to the thing, and I'll do that with Jack. Well, let, let, let me ask that. Yes, we, we set up, for my year, um, and I, I assume this is done for prior years, but we, 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 there was a website, and we, uh, and, and we solicited uh, online um, alumni <coughs> updates. So you would, we all put in, you know, um, what we've done since graduation, uh, you know, uh, you know, families, careers, all that sort of stuff, interests, and, and try to encourage people to do that and kind of link through the website. Yeah. I was going to bring up Facebook later. I think that's, you know, it's, it's, I don't do Facebook, but I'm sure you, you young people do. Oh, you, yeah. 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 <laughs> I just want to share <clears throat> something that I did for, uh, with my committee. I, 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 um, we had a couple of call nights. I, we had one in Chicago, and we had one in, in uh, New York, and, and I asked the, uh, the staff of the Office of Philanthropic Affairs, uh, Molly McKenzie was my volunteer, she's in the back of the room here, um, to organize it, and we got, uh, I, I got my committee members who lived locally downtown, and the university provided a dinner, and then they, we had a, a, a session on how to make the call, because that's always, a, that, that, that's a little awkward, how do you ask somebody for money? So we, we spent half an hour, 45 minutes, going through a, a presentation about how do you transition, how do you start, how do you introduce yourself, how do you move into the in, in, into the gift? We you know there there are the two goals. One is the the the, the amount of money raised. The other is the percentage of the class that gives money. So <clears throat> once you sort of hit your monetary target, um, then you transition to the participation rate, and that's when you're asking people for a hundred dollars or fifty dollars, you know, whatever they can afford to give. It's an important number. Unfortunately, 
in the rankings of the of the um, like the U.S. News ranking and those those places. That that's an important uh, input. It's um, so you want to get that high. But that worked out really well. It was sort of a PBS call night, if you will. We all were together. It was it, it, it was a, a, a little less intimidating calling people up because you had other people that you could share. Oh, I, I you know just got hung up on, or I had a great conversation. I, you know, I forgot about that person from the college, and and so that worked out really well. And then we, I went to New York and we did the same thing. So I'd suggest that as a way to kind of boost the the, uh, the, the gift participation. And now, to me, one of the since we had a, we had had a successful year fundraising before, we got the, this big mega gift um, that, the, that, that the Office of Philanthropic Affairs really solicited, but we got to count in our total. So, so that, that um, we called a, 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 a large percentage of our class. I don't know what it was, it was half maybe, something like that, Molly. Yeah. Um, but we actually made contact, physical phone contact with half of our class. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have a big turnout at our reunion at the function itself. We Out of 450 <coughs> graduates, we probably had 40, 35 or 40. And we, try as we might, we, 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 we couldn't get over that kind of level. So what ideas do you guys have? Um, how did you do it? How, what what uh, attendance levels did you hit? And how did you get there? So, uh, maybe, uh, uh, Scott, you want to start, please? Well, um, yeah, it goes back to starting early um, and trying to create create the buzz and make the personal contacts. Oh, did you know such and such are coming? You know, or, or you should come too. We had over you know over a hundred people at our at our dinner. And Out of what five hundred? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many. Five hundred. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So we had, but I mean, some of those were spouses too, and so right. forth. But uh, uh, so we, but I, but I think, I think it was just um, getting the right people to make the ask. And I, 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 you know, emailed a guy I hadn't seen in 20 years, living in Indianapolis, and said, "Hey, I'm going to the reunion. Are you coming?" And he said, "Well, I never even thought about it, but if I know that you're going to be there, yeah, maybe I'm going to come." So. You know, it's just sort of like those individual introductions that can, can make a difference sometimes. Yeah, I think it's an interesting point, especially um, when you do have a relationship with someone outside of, you know, the person you call every year to ask for money. Um, it, it really does help to make the, you know, request, maybe you can come along. Um, what I found uh, in D.C. and in Boston with, with young alumni is that if you're able to get them out to one or two events every year um, at the local level, um, it, it helps to remind them of the fact that they like hanging out with people they saw in college, hopefully. Um, and then when it comes time to make the ask, we're having a reunion, um, you should think about coming, you, you give them plenty of time, but you can use those events to sort of build a cadence into actually convincing them to come along to, to Chicago. So um, maintaining contacts outside of necessarily one ask um, well ahead of time can really help um, build a, a base of goodwill that you can use to, to sort of cash in for the reunion. Anita, how'd you guys do? We probably had, if it was five years ago, we probably had 80, 80 or 85 that came. Again, some of those were spouses. Mm -hmm. um, we, had a, we had a good speaker, a good faculty speaker. Sometimes that can be a draw. And we, had, we also had a, um, a classmate who was who has a home here in Hyde Park. And for our Sunday activity, um, she invited everybody to come to her home. And she made brunch for us. And her kids were running around. And it was very informal. You didn't dress up. And um, it was very generous of her. And I think that uh, the people found another reason to get together. So that is a nice thing if you have a classmate who loves the house in Hyde Park. So did anybody think the, the, the venue or the dinner or the, the menu or the speaker. We had an interesting speaker. I don't know, it was, it was a, <clears throat> a professor uh, researching autism, and it was a very interesting talk. Um, you know, this, there, there are, there are a, a course, you know, a, a plethora of fascinating people that you can have come and speak on, you know, any topic that you can think of. The faculty, I think, is pretty open. Maybe the, fact, the staff members can uh, 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 contribute here, but I think the faculty is pretty open to supporting these things. They, they, they don't mind coming. Is that right? They, they don't mind coming. We, we didn't have any trouble getting the person that we wanted to come and speak. So you know, any kind of topic you want to have, 
to have a, a, you know somebody at the cutting edge talk about it. It's fascinating, and, it, mm -hmm. and it's that can be. Can, uh, comment? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask a question uh, along those lines. What sort of activities did you guys plan that you Well, I can tell you something that was not successful. We uh, we spent a lot of time planning this trivia contest at our, at our dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and I would not recommend that. So, <laughs> people were more interested in, in drinking and socializing and having a good time. And, uh, and our prizes, which I think we had uh, all the volume of uh, Dean Boyer's you know, writing about the history of the University of Chicago, wasn't a big enough sell. <laughs> 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 so, but the, having more than one event is good, so they, they, they're willing to come in because there's a weekend of, of things going on. And then we, we did one thing uh, several years back that was very successful. I think I'd encourage people to say, just because we're smart and like data and big thoughts, I mean, don't be afraid to have some kind of fun. We had for our 10th a cocktail party that I think was in uh, one of the university you know, lounge areas that we must have paid for. Um, but we had a raffle, and among the choice things, and forgive if this is too specific a reference, there's an iconic econ prop named Sam Peltzman, who is famous for the world's most gaudy, and when I say gaudy, I mean like Tabasco sauce printed jackets. That amoeba, seen. amoeba jackets, amoeba, right. Everything. And uh, the, the, the pinnacle of the auction was to auction off one of Sam Peltzman's jackets. And then the world went around, and in the middle of a cocktail party, because you don't want a lot of lectures, you just want to have a glass of wine and talk to your friends, we had this auction. And then, and the, you know, getting up the gumption to do it, and 10 years out for this old hideous jacket, I think it went for $250, and the guy had props all night that he would won the thing, and of course had to wear it around. <laughs> when there's little mementos like that, there's also a little piece of the fallen Woodward cord, or I don't know, it can be kind of goofy and fun. It's a great idea. But remember, it's all about community and right. having us one. There's a comment here. So, uh, one of the things that Mike and I did, because we've been sharing our opinions for um, we had, we had uh, an architecture tour of how Chicago had changed since our day to now. Mm. I will tell you, it not only sold out, we had people from other classes clamoring yeah. to get on this. Was that put on by the university or the architecture no, we, society? We, we worked the foundation. The like foundation, okay. Yeah. But it was really super. We did it on a Sunday and then we went up to group town. Well, that's a great idea. That is, that's um, the city of Chicago or campus? Yeah, so much. Oh no, it was, I mean, we did IIT's architecture, we did West Town, we did, you know, we went uh, about as far as Streeterville and then came back. Let me, since our time is kind of running low, I want to ask the younger people, because I, I did make a note, um, Michelle and Phil, what about Facebook and Twitter? It's stuff I don't know much about, but, you know, but, but a friend of mine who's a year ahead of me at the college, just uh, got on Facebook and he said it's amazing how many people he's kind of reconnected with through Facebook and I thought it was for my kids you know my uh, and I and he, he's encouraged me to do this but I've not yet done it I mean do you guys have you guys did you use it have you I mean have you used it successfully <laughs> Facebook started when we were in college right yeah it was our, it was our first year yeah so, so we're kind of the first generation yeah, yeah. Um, so yes yes they have a Facebook account but no I don't actually <laughs> use it all the time but it is but I mean, it, I mean, with with, with regard to right. connecting with college. I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, we do put our we do create Facebook invites for events, and so people can <coughs> use that. And it seems like a good way to informally reach out to a lot of people. Yeah, at, at the local level, we do create Facebook groups, or at least we try to, uh, for young alumni in Boston, young alumni in DC, and so we can keep people informed of the events that we're doing locally through those groups. Um, but what I found really helpful, actually, we were just organizing for Phoenix Fest, and we had a list of young alums. Um, I went through and checked off sort of the people who were on the list with the people who were on Facebook and had their networks in Boston, because Facebook data is usually much more up-to-date than right. the university's data. And so it's, it's been really helpful to sort of figure out who is in a particular locality or, or who's doing something. Um, you can get better data on people that way. So how can like a class like from the 70s mm -hmm. that maybe have a third or a half of the, of, the, of the graduates that actually know what Facebook is, have been on Facebook, maybe have a page, yeah. how can they use that? 
I mean, can, I mean, well, you want to make sure you're friends with them first. I mean, <laughs> if, you're, if you're reaching out to someone and, and, and they've never heard of you before, then it's, it, it can be a little awkward, I think. Um, but the, the, the value, I think, of having Facebook as a medium means that you can reconnect with people very easily. And so if you, if you have a list of people who are in your class and you look them up on Facebook, you can send them a note and say, hey, well, we haven't spoken in 20 years, but you know, what are you doing? And that allows you to build a connection outside of an ask that you can then use to really communicate with people afterwards. Yeah, right. you know, Facebook is not just for young people anymore. I mean, <laughs> in fact, in fact the, the New York Times just published an article about how young people are leaving fe Facebook for the next new thing, whether it's Twitter or whatever, because it's being taken over by their by parents. By us. By us. Um, <laughs> and you know, there's that ad on TV with the family sitting around and the father's Twittering the son and the son is getting real upset. Um, yes, that's a good one. <laughs> That's, I, I find in my field now, I have to be, I have to be on Facebook. When a colleague of mine publishes an article or a book, I hear about it through Facebook first. So um, it's become a, a networking tool at all levels. But for, but, the, but for articles or something like that, wouldn't LinkedIn or Plaxo? I mean, I, I, I'm on, I'm on them all. Yeah. Facebook is pers Facebook is personal. Uh, LinkedIn, Plaxo are business professional. So. I'm just saying, you gotta, I don't know. So I, I guess as committee members, you should consider all these ways, all you know, all, yeah. you know be, be creative. And you need to know something about this. A couple comments up, up, up here. Sure, on Facebook, um, I'm class of 95, so I don't really know where I fit anymore. It's too young or old, but also <laughs> the class correspondence yeah. So I created a Facebook group called Facebook Correspondence Club. And then I'm talking I mean, your actual Facebook that you did? did. No, I, I, I have my own Facebook and I set up a group for my class of 95. So that people, I don't have to be friends with them. They get on Facebook, they're like, oh, I'm class of 95, here's this person to meet. And they join it. Right. I go on there every couple of months, I clean up all the mess, and I make sure that everyone's happy. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm on there and So you don't necessarily have to go on to Facebook and start trolling for all of your, you know, everyone who's in your class. If you have an open group, they can on their own just come in and join so you have their information and you can Now there's, the, so there's one last topic that I wanted to get to in our last few minutes and that was finding kind of lost classmates. You know, the university has a database of probably 80% of the class and it's up to date and it's pretty good, but there's, you know, there's, there's that 20% that you don't know where they are, they've lost, they've kind of dropped off the face of the earth, at least as far as the university goes. Is that a good way to get in touch with them, you think? Well, that's part of it. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't think that's, I don't think the university's database is that fabulous. I mean, I think they probably need to be, they probably get better. I mean, honestly, if they took a student and gave them two days and had, gave them Google, and they got back up, I really think that they could really update it a lot more. So that's I think it's a good summer journey. For me, I, I have a Facebook group, and 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 I have a Facebook Seems like it to me. There's, there's more comments here. There's three or three more, and then I guess we've got to wrap up. Let's start here. My quick question was Scott's already said what he does, would not do again with his reunion. What would everybody else not do again with your reunion? What was on the mm -hmm. plan that didn't work? We would not have our get, uh, uh, faculty guest at the reunion dinner give a speech on the fundraising and what is done with the money. That was a real uh, killer. I mean, um, I mean, wonderful person. We all, we were unanimous about dividing her, uh, but I should have known when she said to me before uh, she got up that she didn't know it was supposed to be such an informal thing. She had a few notes. Well, those few notes were like 12 pages, and it took 45 minutes for her to give that. And try as I might, I couldn't, I couldn't stop her. So, Anybody else? The only yeah. thing that went sideways at our reunion was that there wasn't a microphone for the faculty member. Because we had 80 plus people in the room, the voice didn't project. We should have thought. Scott, anything? Phil? I would have I would have promoted the go party a little more. 
Um, I know that especially for the, the Chicago party, um, which is what they hold on Saturday night, they turn Ratner into a big venue, and it's, it's actually a great time. Um, my first reunion, I, I was, you know, like, yeah, it's, university, it's a university event, I've been to university events all weekend so far, I'm going to go and see friends, and so I think we ended up going to Jimmy's or something like that. But um, in the end, you know, it, it is a really good event, and getting people there earlier in the night is, is a great chance to socialize a little more, because if you've been around campus and going to lectures and seminars all day, um, it does give you a good opportunity to kind of kick back. And, uh, there are a couple other questions back here. Anything else? Well, I guess that's oh, yes. One, one, one last thing. Um, I don't know how unique a case I am, but I don't feel very connected to my class. If I'm more connected to the people I met in my dorm, but wouldn't it be weird instead of class to have Burton Judson? I don't know. Shorey House had a re Shorey House and Pierce Tower had its own reunion outside of the regular. Yeah, but during reunion weekend? No, it was separate. Altogether separate. I know they started doing like second, third, fourth reunion groups yeah. together, and so that would kind of bring some other right. classes and that? groups together outside of just your fifth reunion or your tenth or. Yeah, so you may want to look into that. Well, all right, you all have other places to get to. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you got some. Three, uh, yeah. good question. And I hope you got some. Thank you very much for coming.